Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome. Thank you very much for attending uh, this uh, forum, which is the fifth forum of CLAL. We started this experience uh, five years ago. We think that it is uh, a good experience. We certainly will uh, try and improve it, and we will uh, be glad to receive your feedback uh, in uh, uh, the folder that you have received. Uh, yes, last year, we received a lot of suggestions, uh, and we would like to ask you to give us some suggestions this year as well. I'd like to uh, welcome and thank uh, our foreign guests. Uh, I will introduce them later on. But uh, I would like to thank the uh, interpreters uh, that we have here with us, because uh, yesterday they uh, worked uh, very well. So this is what I was told uh, yesterday. Thank you very much. We'd like to uh, thank the translators. And the translators uh, thank Mr. Angelo Rossi for this. Now, yesterday we had uh, a very uh, busy but very interesting uh, day. We talked about the futures uh, and uh, we talked about uh, the uh, global uh, dairy trade. Uh, I opened uh, the uh, day yesterday, and I talked about uh, the uh, dairy market. I will not uh, go through the same presentation uh, today. I will give you just the conclusion, half a page of uh, uh, conclusions, uh, which I drew yesterday at the end of my presentation. Do we have here Nadzib? There he is. So let me tell you uh, that we are not going to have uh, uh, the lady from uh, Iran, Nazib, who is here, is uh, originally from uh, Iran. Next week, he is going to take uh, the Minister for Agriculture next week to the Expo in uh, Milan. Unfortunately, we could not arrange uh, the uh, organization of uh, uh, Miss uh, Galpayagan uh, uh, travel here. Nazib uh, said he is available uh, to uh, Italian uh, operators uh, who would like to establish contacts uh, with uh, Iran. So get in touch uh, with him. This is why I asked him uh, to uh, stand up. Uh, he speaks Italian uh, very well. I think he graduated in Italy. He graduated in Piacenza here in Italy. He is a very serious uh, man. And uh, we are glad and uh, we are honored to have him here with us today. So as I was saying yesterday, we talked about uh, the uh, global dairy trade and we talked about uh, the uh, futures market. And I tend to insist upon this uh, uh, issue. I do apologize. I have to switch my uh, mobile phone off. So as I was saying, yes, we talked about the uh, futures market and uh, of uh, GDT. We had uh, a nice, lively uh, debate, very practical debate, I have to say. Um, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, why uh, am I trying to have you think about futures? Uh, because uh, here with us in the first row, we have uh, Luciano Negri and uh, Fausto Turcato. If uh, I remember well, in uh, the year 2002, um, so if you remember, in 2002, we started assessing uh, the possibility of using futures for uh, Grana Padano cheese. Uh, uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, made a study, but then we had uh, a number of difficulties, and we stopped that kind of work. But back then, we had some uh, good ideas. And I'm going back to those ideas because I believe that this is uh, a very interesting evolution for our industry. And uh, I think it is uh, more than appropriate that we continue talking about uh, these uh, issues. And uh, I think it is important for us to gather more information about this. I liked uh, Michael's, uh, Michael Nolan's uh, presentation. Uh, Michael uh, Nolan's uh, uh, with the Global Dairy Trade, and he explained to us uh, how uh, the uh, GDT uh, operates. Uh, 
uh, it appears that they are very much connected to Fonterra, but as we learned, they uh, operate in a very independent manner. Uh, we appreciated his presentation and the way he explained uh, how they operate. Uh, Mr. Baldrini uh, said that we believe that our products uh, might not be suitable uh, for an auction uh, within uh, global dairy trade. When I say products, I'm referring to mozzarella cheese or grana padano cheese or any other produce that we have. However, this being said, together with uh, Michael, we talked about these issues and we understood uh, what uh, the auction system and GDT is, uh, actually is, and we understood uh, much better how the market uh, behaves and how they operate. I myself understood a few things which uh, were not clear uh, to me 100%. So let's now come to the market uh, in which uh, we operate. Let me tell you briefly uh, what I said yesterday. At the end of my presentation, yesterday I drew uh, my conclusion. First of all, the uh, lack of uh, international events uh, like uh, wars, uh, epidemics, uh, and uh, drought. Uh, of course, uh, these events uh, uh, might affect our forecasts. World demand for uh, dairy um, products uh, will continue to grow, but uh, with uh, stable prices, especially when it comes to powders, uh, because these are mostly devoted to developing uh, countries, especially SMPs, uh, where uh, United States, uh, European Union, and New Zealand will have to fight uh, for demand. We do not see movements or uh, events on. Uh, the demand and supply side that have the potential to kind of disrupt the current situation. So how do we see the current situation? So it will not uh, be going up and down, but we will see it uh, in this fashion, smoothly uh, growing. Now, we had a drought in 2013, which led to an increase in demand. And then we have we had excessive rain uh, rains in rainfalls in Europe. And again, we had drought in 2013. 2007 uh, that disrupted the situation. So this is how we see the uh, world markets at the moment. Uh, the European Union depends uh, on uh, exports. Uh, the uh, core business in the European Union countries is represented by cheese. However, uh, the uh, surplus of milk, uh, which is produced in uh, the European Union, is processed uh, into powder uh, because internal consumption uh, of milk uh, in uh, Europe is not growing, with the exception of uh, certain types of cheese. So there is uh, an unbalance uh, in uh, the current scenario. And I think that going forward, uh, we shall have some kind of stability with low prices. Uh, so we will have uh, a limited uh, growth of demand going forward. Let's come to Italy, which is a country which uh, produces uh, uh, cheese. And uh, uh, most of the production of milk in Italy is devoted to the processing of cheese. And Italy will be partly affected uh, by current conditions uh, because uh, Italy imports uh, a lot of uh, dairy products from uh, European Union countries. We've seen that uh, uh, since we import products, uh, we are affected by uh, the uh, events of the world market. And uh, in our opinion, it is uh, important to have uh, timely and updated information on the trends of the market to be able to follow the evolutions. I hope that the different uh, European players uh, of the supply chain, both farmers and processors, uh, join their forces to set up uh, one study center. And I'm referring to our friends of Niel, Ife, uh, Zuider, Emien, or uh, Z. But also, I am also referring to the Ismea, our Italian friends. I think that we believe that to put together our skills, we need to put together the data that we have in our databases so that we 
can give uh, our farmers and our processors uh, updated information about uh, the uh, current uh, situation so that they can uh, make their own forecasts. We have the data available at the moment, and we should do this uh, together with others uh, because we alone, as CLAL, of course, we can provide data and information, but I think that we should join forces with others. Uh, so that we can have uh, better updated information, which means uh, better knowledge, which I believe uh, could also help us uh, decrease uh, volatility. CLAL is uh, available to work on this project. So this is what I wanted to say. Let me thank you once again for being here with us. We see a lot of people in the room. A few people haven't yet arrived because of uh, problems, you know, traffic problems, uh, but uh, I see really a high number of people in the room, and so I really would like to thank you for uh, being here to the fifth uh, forum. At this point, I'd like to hand you over to uh, Matteo Bernardelli from uh, Mantua. So basically, with him, uh, we are going back home. Uh, so we said we all come from Mantua. Let's take a moderator uh, who also is uh, from our city, from uh, Mantua. So. Uh, let me say that not only is he from Mantua, but he's a very good journalist, and he will help us uh, moderate uh, this uh, day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angelo. Now, the fact uh, that I'm uh, good, uh, well, this is what you say. The fact that I come from Mantua, there's no doubt about this. I hope uh, I am up to the task in uh, representing a city which in the Renaissance uh, was uh, really uh, a marvelous city. I'd like to thank Cloud for uh, kindly inviting me to moderate uh, this uh, fifth uh, uh, forum. And I'd like to thank uh, all of you here in the room, but also I'd like to thank uh, those who are attending this event uh, through uh, the uh, CLAL website uh, in uh, streaming uh, transmission. Now, uh, let me touch upon uh, a few points. Uh, stability of prices in uh, 2015 and the possible recovery for uh, 2016, Asia and the Middle East are considered very interesting areas in an industry and in a market which has become increasingly globalized. Futures and GTD, which represent an opportunity also for a number of Italian products, and then the need to have a European or an international study center. And uh, I think that you share uh, what I'm saying, that CLAL is uh, authoritative enough uh, to be able to contribute to the work of this study center. 